Let's start, sir. Okay. Uh, hello and uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, today, I think few more and new participants are there. So, old and new, I welcome you all. Uh, let me tell you that we have finished about eleven lectures from from this medicine course, and uh, today is the last lecture. Uh, and uh, today we will take this last part that is the uh, veterinary ethics and jurisprudence. Okay, uh, this is a completely different part than the other course of topics because in the generally whenever medicine comes in our mind, then only treatment, then management, its causative agent, then how transmission occurs, how pathogenesis, and how what different signs and symptoms animal will exhibit. These different type of uh, types of feelings and th things will come in our mind, but this is completely related with the ethical duties of veterinarian. What are the different bodies, regulatory authorities are there which keep your surveillance over these ethical practices? Then uh, what is the medical legal case? Uh, in our case, it is a veteran legal case. Uh, what different type of regulations are there? Acts are there? Then rules are there? Their establishment, their punishment, offenses, frauds, etc. Everything uh, this course is about that we'll take in short, uh, not exact, not in a very short, but uh, from our exam, exam point of view and uh, from the, as a highlighted uh, a crash course, we'll take this uh, today. So without any delay, I think uh, because of some technical error, uh, already some delay has happened of, of, of about 10 to 15 minutes. So we won't delay this much and today we'll start. Uh, uh, today now we'll start this. So uh, I I will introduce you. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I will introduce myself. That uh, this is Dr. Shubham Mijapure, and uh, currently I am working as a livestock development officer in the Aurangabad district. Uh, I completed my bachelor of veterinary science uh, in the uh, this College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Parbani, and later on I have completed my MVSC. Uh, in the subject of veterinary pharmacology and toxicology from this uh, IVRI, Bareilly, Uttar Pradesh. Okay, uh, my introduction is over, that's all. Uh, <clears throat> now let's start this uh, topic. So, first of all, we'll learn some basic terminologies as in this course, many new things, new words will come. So, first of all, we'll take those because these words will come later while dealing with this topic. So. Ethics, uh, these are the just uh, what are the philosophical study of moral, moral rules and uh, moral values, all about that thing. It, it is called the ethics. And the next one is the uh, veterinary jurisprudence. Actually, jurisprudence is there. And in our case, it is a veterinary jurisprudence. So this is a branch of veterinary medicine. Again, now uh, in the introduction only, I have told you that this is the fifth part of the veterinary medicine so without doubt this is a branch of veterinary medicine which covers this is important now which covers the purpose of law both civil and criminal okay in the veterinary profession civil and criminal law, uh, purpose of law civil and criminal then medical legal case actually uh, this case means patients or any uh, uh, this uh, what we can see <clears throat> Medicinal case, it pertaining or it dealing to the legal aspect of medicine, but in case of humans, that is called medical legal case, which involve the law, which is not legal, or which may involve police, which may involve court. All these type of cases are called medical legal case. And the next one, like in humans, sometimes accident may happen. Uh, that will come under this medical legal case. Then the next one is the veteral legal case. From our point of view, this is important. Veteral legal case, it deals with the legal aspect of veterinary medicine. There's only simple difference. Medical means medical related with the human population, human medicine, and veteral means simply it is uh, related with the veterinary medicine. In short, it is called MLC and uh, veteral legal case. In short, it is called VLC. Then, what are the roles of the veterinarians in the animal ethics committee? Actually, uh, veterinarians also, as this is a veteral legal case, so veterinarian is the heart of this entire scenario. So, veterinarians will play 
very important role what important roles <clears throat> and all they will uh, play so here we will take they will train the investigators and the technical staff the veterinary veterinarian is the ideal person to monitor the pain as well as the distress of the animals they also introduce the genetic modification of the animals in order to increase their uh, this uh, breeding values and incorporating the uh, traits uh, improvement of the traits then veterinarians are also required or often required to act as information officer or publicity officer as they know the technical background of this field then the veterinarian who is the member of institutional animal ethics committee in short it is called iatc every institute it has this type of committee so master people they must be knowing especially those uh, whose experiments in all the use of animals so in that case they have to take the permission from their respective university or institutes this iac committee then and then only they can use the animals in their respective experiments okay so veterinarian who is a member of this iac by nature of his or her training and experience it he plays a significant role in being able to provide the beneficial advice as just i told you because they know every technical thing in this veterinary field so they act as a very good advisor then uh, there is a very vital body which deals with the animal welfare what is animal welfare and all that we'll take later so first of all we'll take this animal welfare board of india okay this is our actually this is animal welfare board of india and in short in brief it is called a w b i now here are the key points a w b i is established in the year 1962 under the pca act 1960 what is pca it is the prevention of cruelty against animals act 19 which was passed in 1960 and a w b i established in the 1962 it is started by here remember the name rukmini devi arun arun dale arun dale dale <clears throat> this is the name of the founder then this board has total 28 members and tenure of or term of every member is about is of about 3 years so here we have taken five major points first one is the awbi established in the 1962 it is it comes under the prevention of cruelty and uh, cruelty against animals which came in force in the 1960 started by this rukmini devi arundele uh, board consists 28 members and each member's term is about 3 years now we'll take her uh, as uh, we know 28 members are there in the animal welfare board of india here we'll take <clears throat> uh, what uh, persons involved will uh, take their names one by one so in animal welfare board of india body the uh, persons involved are first one is the inspector general of forest okay government of india ex officio then the next one is the animal husbandry commissioner to the government of india also the ex officio one person to represent such association of the veterinary practitioners practitioners like in uh, our case it's a veterinary council of india so one person from that association only uh, sorry indian veterinary association so one person from that association later on two persons to represent practitioners of modern and modern and indigenous systems of medicine to be nominated by the central government then one person to represent each of such two municipal corporations as in the opinion of the again central government one person one person to represent each of the three organizations actively interested in the animal welfare any three organizations one who is representing uh, all those three organizations then again one more who represent three societies dealing with the prevention of cruelty to animals then 
three persons nominated by specially by the directly by the central government and six members of parliament okay again in that one four from the lok sabha and two from the rajya sabha so total four plus two six now we have seen uh, what uh, animal welfare board of uh, when it has been established who established it how many members are there uh, what members are involved what is the term of every member now we'll see here what is the function of this animal welfare board so first of all they keep the law in force in india for the prevention of cruelty so uh, especially they have to keep watch they have to uh, fight for this uh, for uh, so that the law should keep in a force and work accordingly for the prevention of cruelty to animals then the next one is they can advise the central government uh, in if any other rule or act has to be made uh, for the betterment of animals then they can advise about that about that to the central government then again they can advise to the government or local authority or other person other persons about what about improvements in the design of vehicles so as to lessen the burden on rot animals okay then then they can take uh, all such steps as the board as the regulatory board and uh, they they take steps for what they step take steps as the board may think fit for amelioration of animals by encouraging or providing for the construction of shade uh, like or shade or water trough and the like uh, other things and by providing also providing the veterinary assistance to animals so in these three particularly uh, construction of shade building of water troughs and providing the veterinary service veterinary assistance to animals in this uh, in this area they can take the essential positive steps then financial assistance providing that is also one of the important role for what for establishment of pinjara pool or rescue homes or for the animal shelters then they can also they have to cooperate with the coordinate of the work of associations or bodies so that they they also have to cooperate with the other such authorities then a uh, few more are the uh, financial assistance and the other assistance to animal welfare organizations also actually so many other organizations they are working Le later on they will take those organizations names so to provide the financial assistance to those organizations that is one of the role then they can also provide financial assistance to functioning in the local area as well as the other uh, other or related to adjacent area then to advise the government on matters relating to the medical care and the attention then uh, to impart means to educate in relation of the humane treatment of animals this is the humane hu not human humane means related to the humanity so like beta is there pfa is there so they what they do they do uh, their really uh, main role is to provide the humane treatment to the animals okay then to advise the government on any matter on any matter which is connected to the animal welfare they have the power they can advise to the to the central government now acts and rules here many acts and rules are there in our india uh, those will take few we have taken here uh, not just this slide few more are there <clears throat> so just will um, here we have taken their ru uh, rules and their uh, amendment years so keep attention first one is the prevention of cruelty to animals act that is in short it's called the pca act 1960 then prevention of cruelty to brought and pack animals rule 1965 pack animals means those animals which are used to uh, conduct this uh, <laughs> so a pack animals means those animals which used to conduct the heavy loads or weights are uh, so about so prevention of cruelty again those animals is also necessary and that this act came in uh, came in force in the 1965 then again uh, one more prevention of cruelty to animal acts uh, particularly licensing of farriers in the 1965 
then the performing animal rules in the 1975 then the transport of animals rules in the 1978 then the prevention of again pca act of application of fines especially of uh, fine uh, sometimes fine uh, punishment uh, we people uh, this pay the uh, pay the fees or oh, sorry pay the uh, some amount as a fine so application of fine comes under the pca act only but it came into force in the 1978 one more such act about the registration of the cattle premises this one is also act and this also came into force in the 1978 again one more act this all acts come under the prevention of that is mother act which came into force in the 1960 so here capture of animals one more activity capture of animals uh comes under the prevention of cruelty of uh, cruelty of animals uh, <clears throat> and this rule came in the came in force in the 1972 again few more rules are there transport and on uh, transport of animals on foot in the 2001 again uh, the breeding of experiments on animals controls control and supervision rules here same name is there but two different years are there for the amendment that is 1998 and 2001 second and third point there experiments on animals specially controls and supervision that means like cpc sample so it came means this, this is the rules so came in the year again 1998 then or capture of animals uh, 1972 then registration of cattle premises here we have taken again in 1978 transport of animal rules 1978 uh, transport of animals amendment in the 2001 and application of fines again uh, here we have covered it in the 1978 few more are there a uh, few more are there and animal birth control especially in the dogs this came in the year 2009 then breeding of and experiments on animals uh, came in the force in the 2006 then uh, one more that is reconstruction of committee that is cpc sca just happened then breeding of and uh, experiments on animal control and supervision amendment in the 2005 animal birth control dogs rule came uh, also it has one more amendment in the 2001 performing animals registration in 2001 amendment rules is also in the 2001 prevention of cruelty to animals uh, establishment and regulation of societies okay this is also in 2001 about slaughterhouse in the 2001 only and transport of animals on food this also came in the 2001 that uh, every act won't be asked but just for some background and some basic uh, history we have taken uh, that part so that if any are being asked in the exam uh, with they may ask their ear so you just have to uh, read it again and again few times then you will easily remember it now the next regulatory body specially related to the use of laboratory animals and this is called the we all very know this uh, very well know this and this is called cpc sea committee for purpose of control and supervision on experiments on animals forgive me if i have pronounced uh, off in case of on or on if case uh, in case of on but it's uh, full form is a very long <clears throat> this body is constituted by the government of india under the section 14 of chapter 6 of the pca act 1960 now we'll take some roles and functions of this cpc sca so these uh, after the second from the third point all the points which are coming these are the roles of the cpc sca okay so first one is the to all to take all such measures which are necessary to ensure the animals so that it won't suffer from the unnecessary pain this is the very first and foremost very important uh, role of cpc sca uh, is that any animal who which is which should not suffer from the unnecessary pain then make such rules as it may think fit in relation to the conduct of such experiments okay experiments are necessary no doubt but 
that experiments sop should be there every step in that sop has to be conducted in very specified and strict way so, uh, and those rules making is the authority of cpc sca they can modify any rule they can delete any rule or they can add any new rule then one more is register institutions or new establishments or new breeding carrying new new breeders carrying out okay registration power is there then experiments on animals or experiments on breeding animals or uh, experiment or breeding of animals then monitor and inspect the housing of animals okay then monitor the also monitor the transfer of animals okay transfer and acquisition okay so for experiment uh, what we used to do we uh, get those animals which are required for our experiment and we'll uh, allow them to settle for 7 to 8 days so that they can settle uh, for the for that uh, local temperature local climate and they get acclimatized that is called acclimatization period so this thing can be monitored whether this acclimatization is it happening properly or not this uh, monitoring uh, authorities there to the cpc sca then ensure that animals in animals which in the course of experiment under the influence of anesthetic only uh, if pain is involved during experiment so that pain should not feel to that animal and for that that animal must be under the anesthetic um, feel so to ensure that cpcsa plays vital role now the next one is surveillance diagnosis and treatment of animals about this what legal procedures are there uh, we will see all animals should be observed for signs of illness injury or any abnormal behavior by the animal house club towards the animals then unexpected deaths signs of illness distress and other deviations anything which should be not uh, which is not the indication of normal health okay other than deviations from the normal health it could be of any type in animals should be reported promptly to ensure proper veterinary and vet proper veterinary care okay no issue if animal is suffering from any type of cause uh, if it is suffering from signs of illness distress pain uh, or injury but that animal must get the essential veterinary care as soon as possible then if an entire room of animals if infectious agent is present there it is well known especially for example mycobacterium tuberculosis in non human primates here we have taken one example then the group in the above point we have taken single animal now the group should be kept intact and isolated during the process of as it transfer from one animal to an another animal that particular animal or that group should be kept intact and isolated away from the other healthy animals during the process of all the three during the process of diagnosis treatment and during control that should be that must be isolated now <clears throat> welfare of animals used for the experimentation okay now what different type of animals we use for carrying out the experiments we use normally in our veterinary practice uh, in the pathological uh, research or in the pharmacological toxicological microbiological research mostly we use these primates okay mice like a rat like a rabbit primate cat and dogs these are primarily used okay few more also can be used but these are mainly used uh that next point deals with the cruelty to animals means it uh regulates the cruelty to animals if any cruelty is happening to the animals which are kept in laboratories it uh, keeps an eye over it and the next point is information about animal testing we have to provide to them we have to present before them before starting our experiment so information about animal testing here we'll take it uh, in detail so uh, in the information uh, especially about this animal testing every major medical advance is attributed to attributable to the experiments on animals 
any medical device, means every medical every new or uh, procedure then if we don't use animals here a uh, few legal points has been taken that for why we are using the animals for the testing then uh, it's logical reasons here provided if we don't use the animals then okay animals are suffering from unnecessary pain and all but their positive uh, outcomes are there but here <clears throat> as animals if we don't want them to suffer then we would have to test new drugs on the people and that is not possible that's why we use different laboratory animals then we also have to observe the complex interactions of cells tissues and organs in living tissue living animals every day that's why also we use the animals then animals help in the fight against cancer means here it has taken we i have taken only one example that is cancer but so many life threatening diseases are there if we take if we do the experiments on animals then uh, if we are able to develop any new drug against that cancer then we can save millions of humans on this earth that's why animals play a vital role and uh, that's why the testing over them is a necessary science has a responsibility to use animals to keep looking for cures for all the horrible diseases that people suffer from science has the responsibility man means responsibly responsibly they can use the animals uh, especially to develop the drugs against the very very harmful very life threatening diseases and science and persons involved in carrying out this experiment, experiments they must use these animals in a proper way and they must not suffer from unnecessary any type of unnecessary pain or suffering then many experiments which are not painful to animals and therefore justified not every experiment is uh, involving the pain it's not true in all the cases many experiments uh, where we used to feed them you know and uh, we used to add some agent like probiotics and prebiotics this type of experiments can also be done in the nutritional and uh, nutrition uh, and uh, sorry in nutrition uh, subject and there no harm will be there only growth rate and all that we can estimate okay that's the beneficial one and that's not the painful one then we don't want to use animals okay but we don't have any other options don't medical students have to dissect the animals here one question mark is there actually what well, if medical students like the meaning of this eight point is if we don't use the medical if we don't want a medical student to dissect the animals for learning some new thing then they have to dissect the humans in order to learn that that's why no matter uh, that's why okay animals are suffering from unnecessary pain but they that's why these bodies they came into force and uh, why the main goal behind that one is they should use those animals with proper and ethical procedures and that's why this course is necessary then uh, <clears throat> again we came to this uh, protection and uh, we came to the rules and especially uh, we are now dealing with this wildlife protection and rules yesterday those students we are we who have enrolled in this aka foundation uh, yesterday only we have taken the wildlife medicine uh, course so few acts are there and few bills are there those also will take here acts wildlife amendment wildlife protection act amended in the 2002 and uh, the next one is indian wildlife protection act 1972 amended in the 1993 first one is amended in the 2002 then the next one is bills first one is draft wildlife amendment bill 2010 then also the statement of objects and reasons and the third one is the explanatory note <clears throat> then the rules few more rules are there about this wild animals uh, rules and acts so recognition of zoo in the 2009 it came in the both hindi and english national board of for wildlife rules 2003 declaration of wildlife stock rules 2003 again so the next 
come under the wildlife only so we'll take their uh, that different name which has come over uh, that only we'll take here in the wildlife specified plant stock declaration central rules came in the 1995 then specified plants conditions for possession by license rules in the 1995 protection rules 1995 additional matters for consideration 1983 stock declaration central rules 1973 transaction and taxidermy rules 1973 just <clears throat> sorry now legal duties of veterinarian and the court now we will take here of uh, the court also involved in as it this is the jurisprudence course is there so without court this chapter this uh, course is not complete that's why now we'll take here what different types of courts are there especially in india and what type of punishment they can offer so there are total six different type of court are there first one is the supreme court it's supreme of all it's topmost so first one is the supreme court it can authorize it can offer any type of sentence any sentence authorized by law even including the death sentence high court also any they also have the power to offer death sentence then the session court any sentence authorized by law including death sentence but death sentence has to be confirmed confirmed by the high court means they solely can't uh, offer the death sentence then the next one is the chief judicial magistrate here they can uh, provide uh, they can offer the punishment of they can punish the uh, particular person for seven years with some fine then the below that one comes judicial magistrate first class and later on judicial magistrate second class so in the first class maximum sentence of about 3 years in the upper one of about 7 years so in the first class maximum sentence 3 years and fine up to 5000 or even both means 3 years plus 5000 and in the second class maximum sentence of about 1 year and fine up to 1000 or here also it can be both 1 year plus 1000 now functions of court especially what functions of court in our veterinary medicine they can inspect they can uh, uh, invalidate or validate they can and en uh, enforcement is there and legislation is there so four functions of court are there then commonly uh, used terms in court this we must know any uh, this is actually bullet points so from this any single uh, point they may ask as it's a uh, common point and uh, commonly these terms are used in the court so first one is the summons or sabapnia sabapinna i don't know how to pronounce it i will pronounce i will take summons only so summons it is just the attendance of a witness in the court attendance of a witness in a court is called summons then the next one is oath oath is the solemn affirmation substituted by law most of us have seen this type of oath taking in the movies and uh, serials and that is the oath or in uh, hindu or uh, especially mainly in the court they used to keep the hand over the uh, <clears throat> gita bhagavad gita and that is called the oath taking then the evidence evidence it is the proof so it could it could be of two type either it could be orally means statement witness gawa sakshida that is the oral but documentary anything which is the, like uh, a, any person who was a drunk but how uh, this will be proved in the court people will say around that this man was drunk on that day particularly that is the oral evidence but after making its uh, this blood report that blood report will act as the documentary evidence then the next one is the wet or legal reports any report which related with the death of animals either by accident or trauma or poaching or hunting 
these report, reports related with this involving the police involving these uh, illegal activities so th that is called the vetro legal reports any all the reports related to that one then examination of exhibits exhibits means what uh, that uh, particular witness is possessing with him or her and those like articles papers so that is called the examination of the exhibits now legal duties of the veterinarians special in this petro legal case first of all they have to conduct the post mortem of petro legal case then uh, they have to investigate whether this is a common offense or malicious poisoning or fraud that will take later malicious what is malicious poisoning what is fraud what is what different offenses that will take later then uh, they have to issue the birth certificate to uh, they also ha uh, have to provide justice Uh, sorry they have to help in the providing justice means they have to help the poor then application and enforcement of state of law meant for animals they have to help in this one also they should protect the interest of society especially at large and they have to prevent the unethical practices related to the animals then everything in which recourse to law is necessary in relation to the veterinary profession in every aspect of that one veterinarian has to play a positive role then the vet then now wounds as just i have told you here in the second point investigation of common offenses malicious poisoning and fraud so what different type of illegal activities happens in our field means veterinary profession those will learn um, one by one slide so wounds first of all wound as we know uh, there is a break in the skin that is called a wound so it could be of any type first of all it is a uh, uh, major classification is simple dangerous and fatal one okay but again one more classification is there closed wound and open wound closed wounds wound means uh, three closed wounds are there in marathi we used to call it mukama means there won't to be break uh, in skin it won't be observed from externally but inside that wound has caused the damage and that could be of three type either it could be contusion or bruise or hematoma okay contusion means damage to the subcutaneous tissue bruise means this is just the mild degree of contusion and the third one is the hematoma hematoma means okay uh, trauma has happened um, although okay there is no break in the skin but inside the blood vessels has ruptured and that blood has accumulated over there resulted in the swelling of that local area that is called the hematoma then the next one is the open wounds here i have taken www so that represents the wound so in open wounds four main type of wounds are there first one is the incisive very simple as we take incision in the uh, at, uh, during the surgery during the operation so that if such wound is there by the sharp object then it is called incisive wound but exactly opposite to that one if any blunt object uh, or sorry any irregular uh, object with the irregular uh, edges then the wound caused by that object is called the lacerated one then by the use of knife if uh, maliciously or intentionally if any wound ca uh, caused by man or uh, caused by man towards the animals then that is called the stab wound means wound caused by the stabbing and then the fourth one is the gun shot wound simply because of the gun because of the bullet firing then the next one is the fracture in fracture also two main types either it could be complete or it could be incomplete fracture of that particular bone now here we have taken a brief uh, difference in between the anti mortem and the post mortem wounds so signs <clears throat> in hemorrhage Uh, or hemorrhage in the anti mortem it is it's copious but in no in the post mortem no hemorrhage uh, just little venous bleeding will be there clotting in anti mortem uh, before death definitely this clotting mechanism works in efficient way and immediately 
that blood will get clot but in post mortem as animal is already dead so that blood won't get uh, clot then spotting of blood from arteries and this is the living animal so everything inside the body is functioning perfectly every system so if the rupture to blood vessel happen especially from the uh, especially to the arteries then spouting of that blood will come immediately in the live animal but in the dead animal such thing won't happen then inflammation cardinal signs they are definitely present in antemortem but in postmortem such things are absent wound healing and retraction of edges of bone in antemortem uh, gaping of edges uh, will be there but in postmortem no such gaping will be there now in the uh, now we have seen the wounds uh, what are the different type of wounds especially the spatulagal like stab wounds we have seen like the uh, gunshot wound we have seen now we will take the cause of death okay due to wounds okay wound has happened but now what will cause the death after happening of this wound now if wound has happened then in the direct causes hemorrhage will happen means if big wound is there so much blood will get lost in uh, efficient supply of blood to the vital organs will be there in efficient supply of oxygen to the vital organs are there particularly to the kidney to the lungs to the brain to the heart and animal will go under shock and death then the next one is inflammation and septicemia so chronic inflammation uh, near the vital organ or septicemia means toxin and uh, <clears throat> this harmful or uh, chemicals sorry uh, toxins if they release in the blood then because of that one in the blood if proper antibiotics uh, are not given to that particular animal then because of this toxin animal will die then in the burn, burns next is the burn so burn means zone skin zone mainly we know three type of burn first degree second degree third degree but according to the causes here we have taken three causes of the burn what causes burn first one is thermal burn next one is the chemical burn and third one is the electrical burn okay so in the thermal burn again two types either it could be by the moist heat or it could be by dry heat moist heat means steam like in cooker negative this uh, uh, sorry in the cooker extensive pressure will be there and uh, because of that steam burn happens to uh, the skin and that is called the moist heat and the next cause is dry heat means dry heat means like fire next one is the chemical burn means either it could be any type of chemical especially either it could be strong acidic mostly it is strong acid like the hydrochloric acid or concentrated sulfuric acid these acids or the alkalis then electrical burns in electrical burns either it could be contact burn <clears throat> either it could be contact burn or spark burn or flash burn okay in the electrical burns contact burn spark burn or flash burn then retrolegal aspects of death here we'll take uh, take as different causes will take and uh, what uh, as different causes of death will take and what will cause uh, this thing that also will take first one is this spontaneous internal hemorrhage and this is caused by cardiac tamponade or rupture of aorta or intestinal hemorrhagic syndrome or by the rupture of the blood vessels and the next one is the per acute toxemia this happens either by the rupture of stomach or the intestine means especially the colon or abomasum in uh, colon <clears throat> sorry um, uh, stomach abomasum colon in horse it's here like colon in horse mare uh, colon in horse mare and abomasum in cow it's like then in trauma here you have uh, understood right colon in horse and abomasum in mare uh, colon in horse and mare and abomasum in cow it's like that so the next one is the trauma trauma either could be a fight by fighting or uh, by falling from the height then the next one is gi disorders means gastrointestinal disorders either rupture happened to any type of uh, 
layer of stomach or intestine or the chronic bloat this bloat will induce the pressure over diaphragm and sometimes diaphragmatic hernia may happen sometimes uh, irregular way or as this uh, dyspnea will be there so that will also cause this uh, death of animal then the next one is the iatrogenic deaths means because of the medicines improper use of medicines few examples we will take here either by the rapid intravenous infusion of calcium borobulfonate that if fastly we used to give this intravenous infusion in a very fast in a very rapid speed then ventricular fibrillation will be there and death of animal sudden death of animal may occur then the next one is broken penicillin we all know the contradictions behind this use of broken penicillin hyper after the use of this uh, type of antibiotic and the next one is ivermectin as ivermectin its use is strictly subcutaneous but by mistake or be, or by the improper knowledge any uh, cause uh, may, uh, could be behind it and if rapid iv uh, ivermectin uh, if it's given then that may also cause the death of the animal now here we have taken causes of sudden death of animals okay and here we will take causes of sudden death in group of animals okay so either in group of animals means more than one animal how they die either they die by the lightning stroke in thunderstorm short circuit natural calamities then hypomagnesium chronic use of same field over a period of long time to the and to all the animals in a particular herd then that will result in the hypomagnesemia in on one day and that will cause the death of many animals in the uh, herd then poisoning as feed source or water source if common one if it is common then that will cause the sudden toxicity to all the group of, all the animals in that group then this is as caused by infectious agent as outbreak is there more specifically speaking as if outbreak is there of hs bq or colitis especially this hs bq then then also uh, if 10 animals are there in a particular herd then 5 to 6 sometimes may die and the next one is the anaphylaxis particularly if recently vaccination has happened and uh, that antigen that acts as a or uh, xenobiotic and uh, because of that anaphylactic shock may come and many animals in a herd that may die suddenly then how would death uh, from lightning stroke and electrocution happens and what causes the death in this uh, <clears throat> lightning stroke and electrocution will take here death may be due to the following reasons either it could be by ventricular fibrillation or cardiac arrest or respiratory failure that is called a syncope or coma failure of brain and asphyxia failure of lungs so these five reasons uh, are mainly there behind the death caused by lightning stroke or electrocution actually there is a difference between lightning stroke and electrocution lightning stroke means this is the natural one we is probably japan marathi moto that one and electrocution means caused by the electrical wires carrying the electricity this is the major difference between this lightning stroke and electrocution as this lightning stroke it happens very suddenly so it's called stroke and during these two how death happens so death happens either by the ventricular fibrillation or cardiac arrest or respiratory failure or syncope by the failure of brain or by the failure of lungs that is called asphyxia then what different type of pm changes we may witness after the death of animal died by this electrocution there is bloody discharge from the natural orifices as uh, there is break in the blood vessels that will lead to the uh, drainage of blood so from the natural orifices blood will come especially from the ear and nose then survived animal 
okay yeah. although we have taken here pm changes but one point here we have taken that uh, if animal survives then uh, how and what symptoms it will exhibit so from this second one in this survived animal it will eat and drink with very care nervous symptoms also will be there depression and paraplegia there is a paralysis of hind limbs singeing and burning and half in the mouth okay half chewed food food in the mouth these are the very peculiar signs in the animals died or survived from the electrocution so one first point related to the it relates to the pm changes means it relates to the animals or who have died because of this electrocution and that sign is the bloody discharge from the nasal organs but those who have survived in that one they will eat and drink with care nervous symptoms particularly the depression and paraplegia as paraplegia is one of these nervous symptom we can call it because this paralysis involves the nerves then singeing and burning marks uh, and half chewed food if during this electrocution animal is having uh, eating the food eating the feed then that food half chewed food remains in the mouth of that animal then now here first one we have taken first accident that is the lightning stroke or electrocution together we have taken that one and the next here we have taken that is the drowning gudun marne pane gudun marne in uh, english it is called a drown what happens exactly in this drown in this drowning atmosphere air atmospheric air is prevented from entering the lungs now the question arises normally air will go inside the lung but why here it's not because the place of air has been taken by the water water started entering the lungs because of that one atmospheric air, air it has been prevented from entering uh, to that same site and why death happens in this drought death happens due to the asphyxia as there is animal won't be able to uh, get sufficient amount of oxygen shock may happen or the because of the fatal injuries okay uh, <clears throat> especially during this whale sometimes humans or animals they die because of uh, uh, by, because of drowning and uh, there could be one big stone or uh, and fatal injuries may happen and after that injuries already that animal is not able to take uh, proper amount of air and together this will contribute to the shock in animals now pm changes here we will take only pm changes for the survived uh, animal what pm changes will be there skin of such animal is corrugated in appearance corrugated means not in a uniform way that is called corrugated inflammatory injuries are there lungs become edematous because of the intake of water then high this is called uh, also called a hydrothorax presence of water in the thoracic cavity stomach content if we examine if we do the post mortem of such animal then stomach content is full of the contents of water normal in water mud or sand algae different things are there those enter the stomach and because of that one stomach content contains mud sand and algae as well as one more finding is there that is rigor mortis it happens early because most of the atp that has been used during struggling uh, before drowning now changes in body during death okay first one we have seen lightning stroke later on we have seen drowning but now we are seeing under normal death normally death happens or uh, in that death not by any type of accident normally in the in this death what causes uh, what changes will happen inside the body so there is a cessation of circulation and respiration definitely because of this thing only and but dies cooling of body temperature will go down primary flaccidity muscles won't be that much uh, tonic changes in the eyes <clears throat> and the rigor mortis will start happening now changes after death these are during death rigor mortis start happening means um, 
start happening is immediately it will start then changes after death after death what happens flaccidity muscles will become flaccid even if time has passed for the death then putrefaction means uh, सडने अपन जे मन तो मराठी मध्ये दॅट इज कॉल्ड प्युट्रीफॅक्शन देन एडिपोसिर दिस इज अ पर्टिक्युलर थिंक दिस ऑब्झर्व एज अस इज लाईक अ लेअर फॉर्मेशन अँड कंटेन्स लाईक अँड इट्स फील इज लाईक अ ग्रेझी फील अँड प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम दिस फॅट आय डोंट नो विच एक्झॅक्टली दिस फॅटी असिड इज मॉल्ड अँड इट्स ओडर इज पिक्युलर ओडर दॅट इज कॉल्ड मस्टी ओडर then mummification of fetus may happen and leathery look will occur to the fetus and if time has passed and that body is uh, away uh, or away from this human side then that will start uh, the and insects and animals particularly stray dogs and all they will stra- start eating or uh, deterior- deteriorating that carcass so these are different changes happens after death now in pm examination of now uh, in vetro legal cases how pm examination can be done this is also uh, important from this all this uh, working ldo's point of view as well so how pm examination we have to do particularly in this petrol legal case i share with you my personal experience experience as i am here in aurangabad so uh, this leopard attack used to happen at least once in a month they will attack uh, domestic animals mainly the uh, goat and uh, bulls okay so i have gone over there i reached i examined and uh, i have seen even the paw marks of that leopard so first of all this the uh, on duty veterinarian has to visit that site has to uh, examine all the circumstantial evidences and later on go for the post mortem okay rules for the post mortem examination what rules vlc in short now we have uh, taken this vlc it is full form you know vlc means vetro legal case vetro legal case done only after the legal request request from the police or request from the forester and uh, <clears throat> one rakshak only after their request veterinarian can do the post mortem then record first one first point is record the date and the time of arrival of car of arrival of that carcass in the uh, veterinary hospital record the date and time pna now uh, that doctor has started uh, the post mortem so pm examination should be thorough complete and done in the daylight done in the daylight so in uh, night <clears throat> that color pattern and all uh, sufficient amount of light is not there in some cases so it has to be compulsorily done in the day light under the rays of sun then carefully jot down all the changes in the pm jot down means write down all the changes in the pm what is uh, found in this thoracic cavity what uh, changes are there in liver what changes are there in urinary system so write everything properly then all the relevant papers along with this inquest the request from police or forester that is called the inquest okay so all the relevant papers along with this inquest form should be sent back to the police along with the uh, this written post mortem report so in this way post mortem examination of petrol legal case can be done now procedure for the post mortem first of all uh, first of all external examination identify the age breed in detail now we are taking okay already we have taken here just one this point pm examination should be thorough complete and done in detail but just this thing we we are taking in uh, detail procedure for the post mortem <clears throat> okay we'll go little fast uh, as uh, it's 9 to 10 procedure for first of all what have to do for the post mortem identify the age breed sex any tattoo or marks on the body 
then not general condition if it is a good condition or emaciated any external marks of injury also has to be noted if any discharge is coming from the national national natural orifices that also has to be noted examination of external genitalia as well as the examination of bones after the uh, <clears throat> after this post mortem has to be done later on internal examinations in this internal examination body cavities particularly four systems has to be focused body cavities in that stomach intestine liver kidney and spleen will come urinary tract both uh, both the kidneys urinary bladder and urethra in reproductive system genitalia vulva vagina cervix and uterus in thorax lungs heart head brain vertebral column bone and joints will come okay now what pm artifacts what problems will come in this uh, in uh, doing uh, conducting this post mortem that carcass may get putrefied or environmental artifacts like uh, during burning during corrosion or because of this uh, falling of this heavy uh corrosive acid or alkali or maceration of fetus mummification of fetus these will pose a problem and findings won't be that much proper okay third party problems what third party means uh feeding of uh, stray dogs and birds uh, just in last few, few slides we have seen as a consumption of stray dogs may occur that's why if they damage that carcass then uh <clears throat> there will be definitely artifacts and problems then in mis miscellaneous artifacts in miscellaneous what comes like fracture or marks on neck fetlock horns these will also pose a problem in conducting the proper post mortem here this this is the post mortem report <clears throat> what different sign things has to be mentioned here in the post in the ideal post mortem report contributor means uh, who is there uh, who's uh, <clears throat> who have referred and all then date time address later on approximate time since death since approximate times means now uh, suppose at 11 am uh, this veterinarian is writing that uh, post mortem then and uh, death has happened at 9 so that approximate time since death is 2 hours then owner name address uh, animal species breed sex age if identification marks if any then general in the external examination uh, general condition of carcass nature and position of injury state of natural orifices as well as in internal examination we have to uh, go for from one system to the another system in this opinion tentative tentative diagnosis we can do uh, and tentative cause of death we can mention here we means veterinary place and uh, date along with the place and date as well as uh, with the signature qualification and the designation now the next part important part is the poisoning what different type of poisoning will happen this thing we have covered in the toxicology same thing um, all together here we have covered so i will just take one by one names and uh, their changes what happen uh, what happens exactly in that particular for toxicity which organ is involved all that you know so here Uh, what type of poisonings in animals may happen? Either alkaloid or ammonia poisoning or barbiturate uh, means drugs poisoning or cadmium, copper cyanide poisoning, fluoride, insecticides. Uh, particularly in this uh, pesticides, insecticides in that organophosphate, organochlorine, lead, mercury, molybdenum poisoning. Then nitrate, nitrite, oxalate, phenol, cresol, phosphoid, phosphorus, rodenticides, selenium. sodium chloride sodium fluoroacetate strychnine urea water and zinc and zinc phosphate <clears throat> here uh, those names i have enlisted just now they their source either it could be natural or it could be synthetic means from the uh, environment uh, means uh, man made or artificial okay here rodenticides or op compounds or oc compounds these are the man made but a few are the drugs also like barbiturates and few are the metal and non metals also like the uh, cadmium copper oxalate we have also covered this uh, plant poisoning who uh, specially contribute to the cyanide and nitrate poisonings okay now the next uh, comes not exactly the poisoning but they comes under this uh, toxicity uh, sorry a uh, toxicosis and uh, that is the snake bite here envenomation will happen means injecting of the venom 
Now, what is the difference in the toxin, poison, and venom? We have poison is the general name for any type of toxic agent. Toxicant is the proper name of any xenobiotic which has capacity to alter the normal physiological and structural activities. Okay, but the venom is mainly it is synthesized from the living animal. Synthesized in the specialized glands and released by stinging or injecting. Sting released by mainly by stinging or biting. And in this snake bite, mainly two types are there based upon their or this uh, based upon their type of effect produced by uh, toxins. Okay, elapines and viperins. First of all, we will take the left box elapines. Here, cobra. Coral snakes. They uh, these are the examples. They produce the neurotoxins. After the inject, after this biting, what signs will be there? Pain and swelling are less, but neurological changes will start, like excitement with the convulsions. But in the next box, now we'll take here. There will be little bit different findings we can witness in the vipers. Here, true vipers and pit vipers will come. They have a uh, <clears throat> Here one more my point is there in elapines short fang is there but in viperins long fangs are there. So viperins, true vipers and pit vipers, true viper, pit viper, russell viper, this viper, viper, viper names they will come under this viperins group. They have a long fangs and produce here hemotoxin necrotizing and anticoagulant. This hemotoxin is the necrotize, necrotizing and uh, interfere the process of coagulation. Then severe local tissue damage, local tissue damage is evident. It becomes discolored, means that local area becomes discolored within few minutes. Dark bloody fluid may ooze out of the fan wound. Dark as they have the long wounds, so uh, sorry, long fangs. As you have the long, uh, as that viperins have the long fangs, so that wound will be deeper, and that's why fluid will ooze out from that fang wounds and uh, fang wounds and coagulate, coagulate pathy of blood is there, or coagulation of blood is completely lost. Then common offenses. Now here we uh, this poisoning is over. Now, what different common offenses offenses in India happens? Okay, they are mainly divided in two broad categories. One is maiming, and the next one is mischief. Okay, first of all, we'll take this mischief. Because of this mischief, <clears throat> it's a broad term, and it involves killing, poisoning, or the maiming of animal. Now we'll see. We know killing and poisoning. Now we'll see the maiming. Maiming means it's not. It doesn't cause the death. But it will cause severe injury and pain to the animals. Okay, in maiming, fracture of bones will happen, cutting of tendons of uh, leg and neck will happen, stab wounds will be there, even injury to others, in, uh, especially to the in the milch animals will be there, injury to the vagina and rectum will be there in order so that that animal later on won't uh, should not consume. These four or five examples activities are carried out by the humans only means this is the malicious or intentionally uh, performed activities in maiming making the animal uh, productively and reproductively uh, <clears throat> ill that is called a maim. It's not the exact defin definition but uh, its uh, meaning is like that. How this can be done either uh, fracture can be done in that animals, uh, cutting of tendons, stab wounds can be produced, injury to that udder so that uh, mastitis will occur and injury to vagina or rectum so that animal won't later, uh, won't uh, get conceived. Now, cruelty to animals. In detail, we are saying first one is the bestiality. Okay, What exactly the bestiality is? Spelling is B-E-S-T-I-A-L-I-T-Y. It means the carnal intercourse with man. Okay, carnal intercourse with man, woman, or animal against the order of nature. Against the order of nature. This is called the bestiality. What causes are there? Either excessive sexual desire or mentally abnormal people, mental uh, 
दिस विक्रत मानसिकता व्हाट वी यूज टू कॉल इन मराठी सो मेंटल एबनॉर्मल पीपल लाइक यंग विलेज इवन द नेक्स्ट कॉज इज यंग विलेज बॉयज हु गो अवे फ्रॉम द ह्यूमन साइड दे यूज टू ग्रेज द एनिमल्स लॉन्ग एंड गो डिस्टेंस गो अवे फ्रॉम ह्यूमन साइड एंड दे आर दे कैन डू सच एक्टिविटीज एंड देर इज अ मिथ अमंग पीपल दैट those humans they have the gonorrhea they can be treated their gonorrhea can be treated if they do the intercourse with the animals means interspecies intercourse this is the myth because of these four five reasons bestiality uh, crimes will happen now diagnosis actually uh, different methods can be employed for the diagnosis of this uh, bestiality but finding the gonorrhea organisms under the microscope is the particularly means is the uh, specific and confirmatory diagnosis now semen uh, during the diagnosis procedure we would, we are taking one more point semen stains that can be examined by four methods physically microscopically chemically and serologically the second one is the microscopically if uh that microorganism if the microscopic findings are about the gonorrhea organisms then uh, as myth is there people with the gonorrhea they mostly do this interspecies intercourse so that is the confirmatory finding and this is punishable under the indian penal code <coughs> section 377 now the next one is common frauds in the sale of livestock in the sale of meat in the sale of milk will take all these one by one. so uh, now farmer knows that his animal is little bit old and uh, he is very well know that he won't get the desired price he will get the less price for that animal if he sells that so if he sell that uh, animal in the market so they will do and they will alter uh, they just want to alter this external appearance of animals so that it would look young and the price against that animal will be more so how they can do this either they can color the white patches or they can clip the mane and tail then mane means uh, this especially uh, you can observe this in the horses okay then docking can be done or castration can be done and one very interesting thing is there that is called the bishopping okay bishopping is the making as dentition uh, or uh, this yes dental pattern is the ideal pattern for the measurement of age okay but what people do here they will make small holes in the incisors of horses this thing particularly done for the horses okay making small small holes in the incisors of horses and filling it with silver nitrate as marking nut then the <clears throat> incisors they Uh, won't uh, be fall. They won't fall. Means they will be attached in a uniform manner. And uh, by the looking at those incisors or that dentition pattern, horse will look young. That is, this is called bishopping. Every type of fraud, fraud in the sale of livestock or in the sale of meat or milk is punishable under the Indian Penal Code, IPC, Section four hundred and twenty. and basically it was punishable under the section 377 now the next one is the in the sale of milk so here uh, what people can do <clears throat> uh, by uh, what different type of test and what different type of type of additions can be done here we are saying we can detect the specific gravity by the lactometer because people do this here <clears throat> Here, uh, they can add the thickening agent so that specific gravity uh, of that uh, can be uh, of milk can be increased. They can add starch, gelatin, or cane sugar, uh, and this detection we can alter. We sorry, we can detect by the lactometer. Then test for the nitrate in milk. <clears throat> nitrate people can also add the nitrate. Then the reduce reduction of fat by adding water, skimming of milk, or the oh, sorry. by adding water or skimming of milk then coloring agent what people add they can uh, add this anato preservatives people add particularly uh, formalin it could be boric acid hydrogen peroxide or bicarbonates then accidental adulteration 
Okay, these are the intentional, but accidental adulteration is there. It during milking, urine of animal, some spots of urine, dung, or dirty water that can get <clears throat> accidentally uh, mixed with that hill with that normal milk. One special term has we, we have taken here as it was missing from the earlier parts. <clears throat> That is the puka or dumdev means introducing the air into the female organ to stop milk secretion. This thing we have to take in the maiming, but uh, uh, we have taken it here. Keep in mind the term, its name, that is the puka or dumdev. It means introducing the air into the female organ so to stop the milk secretion. Then the next one is the frauds in the sale of meat and its detection. We have seen sale of livestock. Secondly, next we have seen sale of milk. Now we are seeing sale of meat. What different methods can be done uh, <clears throat> for detection of such fraud? Physical methods, rigor mortis, onset time. Uh, in some animals, it may set early. In some, some animals, it may uh, set later. So based on its time. Then meat of already dark animals, its appearance is different. So already dark animals are there, oh, sorry, on already dyed animals are there, then its milk is, the color will change and its color is dark red, blue, not particularly dark. It will turn reddish blue, okay? Then chemical methods. In chemical methods, glycogen test or test based upon fat of animals. Uh, also there is estimation of refractive index or also, there is estimation of iodine value of meat. Here we have taken a uh, few these parameters here: refractive index and iodine value. Now you you may ask, what is this? Okay, these are the parameters used for the uh, these are the parameters uh, fixed for particular meat of for the particular species. And if there is change in that values, then uh, we can show that this meat is adulterated. Some immunological methods are there. And those are immunoprecipitation test, electrophoresis method, or isoelectrical focusing. Okay. Chemical methods, physical methods, chemical methods, and immunological methods we have covered here. Here in the world, frauds are punishable under section 420. Means all the type of frauds in the sale of livestock, in the sale of milk, or in the sale of meat, if it's found, and that um, particular respected person found guilty, then he or she is punishable under section 420. Here, <clears throat> I just have told you that uh, different. Uh, there is a definitely change in the uh, appearance of meat. So normally meat color, how it is there and how fat deposition is there, here we'll see. In the sheep meat, we'll take one by one species. In the sheep meat, its color is dark red, comb and dense will be there and white fat deposition between the group of muscles. But in the buffalo, same color is dark red, uh, appearance is firm and pale white. Horse flesh, dark red, soft and golden to dark yellow fat color. In dog meat, it's a dark red color uh, and fat white fat slightly intermixed with the muscles when the beef uh, <clears throat> red in uh, appearance firm it's fairly firm and yellowish white fat camel meat red in color again fairly firm and pale yellow color fat goat meat this and pork this both are light red but goat milk is uh, sorry goat meat is very firm and uh, pork is very soft Pure white uh, fat is there, but in case of pork, it's white and granulated fat. In the poultry, appearance is whitish and the firm appearance, and uh, here also fat is intermixed with the muscles. And the last one is the fish. Appearance is same like uh, that of poultry, is white. Entire muscular mass of each side comprises a single muscle plate, and fat is finely distributed in the muscles. Now, the, here uh, as dentition, uh, <clears throat> Here we will learn the methods to determine the age of animals. Okay. While bishopping, while learning the bishopping, or in this stage, or, the, or in the sale of livestock, we have learned that dentition is the important pattern to determine the age of animals. But along with the dentition, how many different patterns are there uh, that we'll cover here? First one is the dentition pattern. We all know every animal has a fixed dental pattern and fixed dental number. Next one is the rings of horn. 
what happens in cows or uh, you may have seen many rings on the uh, horn of the old cows why this happens in cows first ring appears at the age of 3 years in buffaloes also it appears but at the age of 4th year 4th year and later on after every year one by one ring will start on appearing if five rings are there in case of cow then you may say the age of that particular cow is 5 years but if it is buffalo then the age of that particular buffalo is 4 plus 2 okay five rings uh, four come uh, three rings come at the age of 4 years then four and five so <clears throat> uh, that buffalo age is six years then first ring comes at the age of fourth year uh, fourth year then later on one after passing every year one by one ring will get on uh, get on adding then external examination first two are the characteristic and uh, specific methods are there but later on less specific are external examination if straight back and tight udder is there then these are the indication of young animals then young animals have this smooth hoofs also if we do the joint so radiograph then uh, uh, everything is in its proper position is of uh, indication of the young animals and birth certificate that is that also provide the major clue and uh, at exact date and exact age of the animals now here this is the certificate of soundness that animals healthy and all now insurance of livestock this is also very important what different type of livestock insure livestock can be insured so sheep and goat then camel pig uh, this cattle and buffalo elephant poultry or animal driven car everything can be insured and conditions for insurance okay insurance uh, bima <clears throat> particular a uh, farmer he has he wants to uh, draw insurance for his animal but the conditions are his animal must be in a good health under proper shelter has to be vaccinated against the fatal diseases and if there is any recent accident injury or uh, death of or adjacent or nearby animal happened then that history must be clear okay so four major uh, requirements are there like good health proper shelter vaccination and information about accident injury or the death of animal now what things uh, will come under the insurance so <clears throat> first of all the price of animal then scope of cover what is the scope of cover not just by the uh, death not just uh, it will cover not the death of animal just covered from the disease but also or from the natural calamities like the fire like the lightning like the like during the operations also then important exclusions which are the theft or malicious poisoning then additional cover uh, with especially for the permanent and total disability arising from the accident uh, and suffering of that uh, arising from the accident of that animal and then age group this is specialized insurance is specified for the different schemes okay this age group criteria is specialized for the under, uh, different schemes some insured how much money that insurance company can offer to the farmer it is based upon the market value of the same animal in that present time then in them in uh, damnity agreed value basis what has been agreed before and other premium rates as well as the other rates they can also be covered now what requirement should be there to claim the insurance okay now we are in the insurance part again will remind i will remind you insurance of livestock first of all we have taken what type of animals will can be insured what conditions and requirements are there for the uh, insurance then what different scopes is scopes are there for the insurance what things covered under this insurance and in order to claim that insurance okay animal has died post mortem uh, animals died all thing uh, has been done now that farmer wants the post mortem has done and all now that farmer wants the reimbursement against that animal so he must possess complete claim form clear tag wherever applicable that is now must one death certificate of that animal treatment chart if that animal has been treated 3 4 days 3 4 days before the death
if that animal has or <clears throat> uh, treated three four days before the death uh, he has he has treated first on the on the uh, third day and died on the fourth day then all the treatment all the injections and medicines given to that animal injected orally parenterally and all that treatment chart must be there as well as post mortem report detailed thorough post mortem report should be there the must one the very important one is the photograph of the dead animal especially during the procedure of post mortem as well as confirmation of post mortem report by the local authority as well not just from the doctor but by the local authority like the sarpanch or like the post mortem it depends on the authority uh, on the locality where this uh, death of animal has happened I, in, 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 uh, has it happened in the village area has it happened in the urban area uh, urban uh, uh, urban area so it depends upon uh, so local authority also depends uh, based on that locality now <clears throat> here yeah. miscellaneous frauds we have seen uh, frauds but here again we will take few more frauds people uh, <clears throat> do so many different type of frauds not just in the sale of livestock not just in the sale of meat milk but they can also some miscellaneous fraud or uh, do some miscellaneous frauds <clears throat> and here that all those all come under the doping doping you must have heard and uh, this word is completely associated with the performing athletes they used to take some chemical or some agent which will enhance their performance they so that they can act they can perform well and that is called the doping so for doping what different type of agents can be used so either stimulants including adrenaline cocaine caffeine or depressant like the barbiturates heroin like the mo and here mode of administration of drugs mostly it is parenterally but it could be orally also clinical signs there is in coordination of gait is the primary clinical sign and the other signs are there but it depends on what type of doping agent has been has gone inside the body then tests are there for the detection of doping this is also depends upon what type of agent is involved and vitro legal aspects of doping has to be thoroughly examined now the next one uh, important term in this uh, our veterinary ethics and jurisprudence course is the euthanasia the literal meaning of it is a painless death of an animal for humane reason again this word came humane means related with the humanity not human this is h u m a n e why there is a need if animal is suffering from extensive pain then it's better for uh, it's bit it's better it's death uh, he should die uh, it's better it should die rather than suffering from that extensive pain then what is prerequisite to carry out this euthanasia we must have to take the consent from the owner then method it should be economical and reliable okay means already we are killing that animal but we can't charge or we must not have to uh, push that animal in this economy so that we use very uh, expensive agents or chemicals it should not be there we should use the economical and cheap ways to kill that animal and agents that can be given either inhalation uh, to cause this death in short time then we can give either by inhalational route or by the injectable route now the next again is animal welfare came <clears throat> in animal welfare uh, here we have taken so many uh, euthanasia insurance form so many things short terms we have taken so again later we will uh, deal with this we will take few more concepts from this animal welfare actually the history behind it is as the indian culture uh, animal always had a respect like in hinduism we used to worship the cows cows and its calf animal welfare means how an animal is coping with the condition in which it lives an animal is in a good state of welfare if it is healthy comfortable well nourished safe able to express innate behavior and it is not suffering from unpleasant states like pain fear and distress 
this much defin this much big definition this much big meaning is there for of the animal welfare not just the animal is should be in good condition but it should not suffer from any type of fear not from the uh, any type of pain not from the fear also and any type of distress also ensuring animal welfare is a completely human responsibility and what aspects uh, will cover this animal welfare is proper housing management nutrition and the disease prevention as it's a responsibility for uh, humans is there responsibility of humans is there so <clears throat> if cruelty is happening any cruelty is happening then uh, respected respective people they can uh, inform this authority peta that is people for ethical treatment of animals and one more type of cruelty may happen towards the animals that is in the circus we all must have witnessed in our childhoods childhoods that animal in circus they are customarily and hazardously exposed to multiple diseases because they are only utilized for the entertainment purpose they are not kept uh, under proper housing or management and nutrition is very poor that's why uh, this is called circus animal cruelty now uh we have seen the role of veterinarians uh, now in the postmortem particularly now we'll see what are the roles of the animal welfare officer in short it is called aw so the first two days he should, he should have thorough knowledge of all the following laws what are laws this all laws we have taken uh recently in last few slides that is prevention of cruelty of animals like protection of wild animals or uh, <clears throat> animal birth control so all these rules he should have the thorough knowledge then animal then the next duties we are dealing with this uh, duties of animal welfare officer awo if he wish to inspect any illicitors illicit slaughterhouse or premises he can he is authorized to inspect that one then the next one is awo if he has uh, this uh, search inspected this uh, slaughter houses or premises and all then if any report of illicit slaughter is made then he can file a case means case must be immediately reported to the concerned authorities particularly to the animal welfare board of india then duty 4 is report he must report the incidents of cruelty that could be of any type he should report then day 5 oh, sorry duty 5 duty number 5 is he must network with the like minded people in the neighborhood and organize for organize the immediate rescue operations or the emergency relief as well as the additional duty is animal welfare officer is to make sure that animals like bears and monkeys they are not used as performing animals in his neighborhood and they are not subjected to the cruelty and the suffering now the other uh, miscellaneous work duties are he should prevent the misuse and abuse of uh, abuse of oxytocin drug in order to draw more milk from lactating animals he should uh, uh, participation in coordinating or organizing training programs for villagers this one is also important duty then it is expected from aw is that he should organize first aid veterinary care food and shelter for the bound sick and destitute means distressed animals he also he must provide proper care and management of birds and fish maintained in the aviaries as well as <clears throat> he has to take conduct the training programs like the organize mobile clinics and veterinary camps sensitize the community at uh, about the remedial uh, measures especially in the animal sacrifices bull fights jelly katu festival uh, he has to be uh, he has to establish a good rapport with the local press and electronic media <clears throat> for the uh, for spreading the awareness on the animal welfare <coughs> the use of the animals uh, for the inter inter uh, entertainment industry must be thoroughly vigilant uh, vigilantly monitored by the aw as in the movie's beginning uh, <clears throat> there is one disclaimer that no animals were harmed during the making of this film <coughs> so that thing has came here aw is expected to keep close liaison with law enforcement agencies such as police means local police as he has to make good rapport with the local press 
as such uh, he has to uh, keep close rapport with the local police and all <clears throat> he is not entitled to collect any type of fine <clears throat> or accept cash from the operators he just have to do other activities and not authorized to collect fine on uh, behalf on himself only then what are the roles of veterinarians so many duties are there for the animal welfare officers now what are the uh, duties for the veterinarians here in the animal welfare <clears throat> veterinarians roles are a role are they has to keep the animals in healthy condition and uh, <clears throat> they have to manage or uh, monitor their eating behavior drinking behavior eliminative uh, behavior and resting behavior in return for regular food water shelter and medical care if it is reaching to the animals in a proper uh, amount or not that they also have to keep watch then the veterinary profession uh, plays a key role in the controversy controversy in that it possesses detailed knowledge if any controversy is there then veterinarian play a key role as he knows every technical background and that's why he plays a very critical role as a, a professional of this uh, veterinary <clears throat> course now additional duties are there he should be in a regular contact uh, with the animals uh, <clears throat> and either in the clinic or during the visit of farms veterinary profession has to prepare itself for the better future challenges both in the veterinary curriculum and in terms of the continue uh, continued education <clears throat> as people are requesting additional veterinary services so he has to go and inspect uh, and inquire about what different type of veterinary new services people are expecting moreover as people have come to value their pets more highly many head veterinarians have responded by offering and charging so such thing has should not happen now what is the role of veterinarians in animal production and maintenance okay as people a uh, veterinarian is responsible for the management of laboratory animals and uh, he has a very specific knowledge because of his uh, degree and laboratory animal veterinarian particularly has to apply all his knowledge uh, so that animal should suffer less they can also diagnose and treatment the, uh, tre treat the diseases then additional responsibilities are like the personal management of his own team he has to other uh, <clears throat> additional duties like financial management and uh, environment control as well as ultimate aim of laboratory animal veterinary is to provide the animal to the researchers in the timely and efficient manner now here we have taken few more uh, animal welfare organizations and in detail so many organizations are there in the under this animal uh, not, not just awba but starting with the cpc sca pc is there non governmental so many organizations are there and these organizations now i will take here one by way one by one by one that is spca society for prevention of cruelty to animals then the awbi our favorite one ministry of environment of forest m o o e f in short it is called royal society for prevention of cruelty of animals wspa world society for Pre protection of animals blue cross of india blue cross of hyderabad pfa people for animals men ka gandhi we all know wildlife institute of india visakha spca spca means society for protection prevention of cruelty to animals APOWA means action for protection of wild animals bombay spca then uh, health in suffering named one then animal rights international pet animal welfare society kolkata spca animal rights fund here only in this slide three spca came kolkata bombay and visakha in and in the last one this royal society for or uh, royal society and society for protection and cruelty to animals <coughs> procedure for animal now we will uh, under this uh, prevention of cruelty to animals pc act 1960 so many sub rules and acts will come so we'll take here one by one first one is the now minor rules will be there okay this one is the uh, about the registration animals registration here first of all, first of all what has to be done application of registrants uh, registration rules 2001 here fees is there 500 of 500 rupees additional information we can demand in order to register that animal form of certificate is there for registration prior information 
to use if that animal is being used later on in the as a performing in the circus or in the film so prior information is necessary and general condition for registration is very necessary that if animal suffering from disease feeding or recent transport has happened or later on that animal will get transported so that general information uh, is very necessary for the registration now this next rule is the draught and pack animal rules 1965 here you must be seeing this pca 1960 so everything which we are taking later on this these will come under the pca act 1960 only so the uh, <clears throat> here draw time pack animal rules 1965 uh, this rule is there for the animals who conduct who transport the loads and loads of weight so what what there is a standard for particular animal how much they can carry if there is small bullock or buffalo is there then uh, it should carry 100 kg maximum this is the maximum load okay if medium uh, bullock is bullock or buffalo is there then it is 150 if large bullock or buffalo is there then maximum weight is 175 kg pony has to carry maximum 70 kg mule 200 kg donkey is 50 kg and camel 250 kg here the maximum is for the camel that is 250 kg now the next one is the transport of animals rules 1965 here we will take two first one is the transport of cattle and later on we will take transport of sheep and goat so transport of cattle rules 47 to this is sorry <coughs> this is to not all rules 47 to 56 apply to this transport by rail of by the rail either of cow bull or bullock valid certificate should be there from a vet and without that certificate uh, <clears throat> that transport is illegal veterinary first aid equipment should be there with that uh, group of cattle average space must should be available suitable rope and platforms must be there cattle in advanced stage of pregnancy shall not be mixed with young cattle in order to avoid this stampede okay then sufficient food and water will uh, must be available during the transport and if it is by train then uh, in one wagon maximum six animals should be kept not beyond that so this all the these are all the conditions for the transport of cattle here the important point is in one wagon maximum six animals should be kept how much six for cattle the next one is the transport of sheep and goat here also rules as the, uh, in the last slide uh, rules 47 to 50, 47 to 56 apply here also rules 65 to 75 will apply for the transport of sheep and goats uh, <clears throat> here also valid health certificate first aid equipment suitable ropes uh, for land suitable landing and unloading sheep and goats should be transported separately not in mix sufficient food and water as well as sufficient space should be available same uh, like that of cattle but only the rules their number varies there it was 47 to 56 here it is 65 to 75 then transport of animals on food rules 2001 this is the standard uh, uh, this chart is a standard of containing how much animals has to be uh, sorry uh, how long an, an animal has to be <clears throat> go in one hour then maximum number of walking uh, hours how much uh, should be there in one day period of rest how should what should be there and, tem and temperature range. these everything has been given in this rules and that is called transport of animals on food rules 2001 starting with it now we'll take here species later on maximum distance the maximum hours period of rest and temperature range so first one is the cattle cattle maximum distance covered per hour uh, if Per day it is 30 kilometer. If per hour it could be four, four kilometer maximum. Eight hours he should be walked. Uh, uh, that cattle should be walked, especially cows. And periods of rest should be after every two hours. Temperature range could be between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Then buffaloes 25 kilometer a day or three kilometer per hour. Eight hours maximum and uh, rest after every two hours. And uh, temperature should be between 20, 12 to 30. 12 to 30. Then if cow, cattle and calf, if they are together, then 16 km per day and 2.5 km per hour, 6 hours maximum transport and rest after every one and a half hour, temperature range should be 15 to 25. Horses, ponies, mules and donkeys, for all these, 
maximum 45 km per day or 6 km per hour, 8 hours maximum period and rest after every 3 hours. Temperature range 12 to 30. Same again for coal, we will take, uh, we'll take important part that is the goat and sheep here. These should be transported 30 km per day of yellow speed uh, or 4 km per hour. Maximum transport should be uh, for 8 hours and uh, rest after every 2 hours. Temperature range should be between 12 to 30. Pigs <clears throat> here or second last pigs. We want to uh, take this piglet, kids, lambs and young ones as you can read uh, later on. So pigs will take here. They should be cover. Uh, they should cover maximum 15 kilometers per day distance with 2 kilometers per hour. Maximum uh, number of walking hours in a day should be 8 hours at a, and rest should be after one and a half hour. And the temperature range should be 12 to 25 degree Celsius. Provided that during every rest period, enough sufficient amount of drinking water and feed must be there. <clears throat> Some important rules under this PCA Act 1960. We have taken these rules. Uh, I want to go again and again. Uh, just uh, I will read. Uh, I will just read and uh, I will move to the next one. <clears throat> under PCA registration of cattle premises 1970. Uh, here I have intentionally taken this because uh, these are very hard to remember. I know. Or slides number will get lit will get increased little bit, but this is important one. And if any type of uh, rule, if they ask their year, then it's easy for you to remember. So again, we have taken this application of fines in 1978, capture of mild uh, animals in 1979, slaughterhouse 2001, animal birth control 2001, establishment of regulation of societies for prevention of cruelty of uh, animals in 2001, cattle trespass act 1971. Again, wildlife 1973, wildlife rules 73, wildlife protection rules 1995, wildlife specified plants condition for possession by licenses license 1995, recognition of zoo rules 1992, livestock importation act 1898, and livestock importation amendment is 2001. Now, one more sub uh, act uh, is this slaughterhouse act. This also comes under the PCA Act 1960. So here. What exactly the meaning of slaughterhouses there? Unproductive, uneconomical animals. Uh, they uh, get skilled and their meat and uh, their and their meat and leather that is utilized for different purposes. That place is called a slaughterhouse, and humane method of slaughter is used over there. Here, <clears throat> and veterinary person means it's a registered veterinary doctor. These are few definitions in this act. Animals uh, and now conditions. Animals not to be slaughtered. Except in recognized and means ex only they should be slaughtered in recognized or licensed houses. Means slaughterhouses. Then paid doctor must not examine more than 12 animals per hour. He should examine 12 or less than 12 animals and give his statement whether that particular animal is stable or not for the postmortem of for the slaughter. Then no animal should be slaughtered in a slaughterhouse inside of the other animals. Means if Butcher is slaughtering one animal, then other animal must not see that scene. <clears throat> then inspection of slaughterhouse, this, this all conditions and these all things will come under this slaughterhouse rules 2001. Then slaughterhouse act state wise, these are all the acts, particularly for the cow slaughter act, cow slaughter state wise I have taken here. Here, most of the states of India are there. Only, uh, I think, two states are there where, <clears throat> I think, one or two states are there uh, where no legislation is there, especially here. Yes, this Meghalaya and Nagaland. Later on, you go through these slides, and uh, I won't read this again and again. It's, uh, I won't re read this because it will take time. And this is just this state wise acts and their establishment uh, force uh, when they come in force, those years are there. So you later on go through it. Now, just remember here cow slaughter is not banned, means there is no legislation, particularly in the Meghalaya and Nagaland. Also, you search current, what exactly, what current uh, issue is there, which states are allowed and which states are not allowed. Now, Wildlife Protection Act 1972, what different type of sections it will uh, <clears throat> cover. 
first one is the if chapter 1 is the preliminary information in that chapter 2 authority is the uh, appointment of authorities in third hunting of wild animals uh, fourth one is protection of specified plants uh, <clears throat> then uh, protected chapter 4 chapter 3a deals with the protection of specified plants and chapter 4 deals with the protected areas chapter 4a deals with the central zoo authority and the recognition of zoos as this is a wildlife protection act so definitely zoo comes and it comes in the 4a that is the central zoo act and recognition of zoos then chapter 5 trade or commerce in wild animals animal articles or trophies chapter 5a prohibition of trade or commerce in trophies animal articles chapter 6 prevention and detection of offences chapter 6a four feature of property derived from illegal hunting and trade and chapter 7 all the miscellaneous things which comes <clears throat> that is uh, that comes under this chapter 7 now this central zoo authority here i have this chapter 4 Here, chapter 4a. Last means yesterday we have taken this Central Zoo Authority, what its roles and all. But here one typical format is there. In order why this is required, if there is application for getting, if if a uh, particular zoo wants to come, wants to register, uh, wants to get recognition from the Central Zoo Authority, then this application format is there. Ah, uh, here. <clears throat> the the member secretary central zoo authority of india i want to get recognition from section 38 wildlife uh, protection and it is in respect of this this bank of postal order and all here uh, has it has to be mentioned everything in order to get the recognition from one central authority regarding all the zoos all the zoos of india will come under that one that's why it is called central zoo authority in short it is called cza established in the year 1982 so this is the typical format of this um, <clears throat> recognition and here uh, all the animals also uh, has to be mentioned about and their number has to be mentioned name and number has to be mentioned uh, those are currently in that particular zoo now the next act is the glantus and parsi act 1899 this is very important one <clears throat> here also uh, first of all local uh, application of uh, application to act to local areas by local government then uh, local government uh, to appoint the, uh, there is a power for local government to appoint inspectors there is a power for uh, inspectors of entry and search also the seizure seizure then horse to be examined by veterinary practitioner only or if found deceased then has to be destroyed uh, otherwise restored and where how uh, when horse deceased place where it has Uh, this uh, when uh, sorry per horse disease then that place has to be disinfected all uh, hey, these are some important points comes under this act you remember the year this is that is the utmost important means glander and parsi act came in the year 1899 that thing you keep in mind now other uh, these are some other things <clears throat> like Uh, if any owner if his horse is deceased then he has to give notice then prohibition uh, against removal without license of horse which has been license uh, which has been deceased then vexatious entry search and seizure can be done penalties for refusing to comply with notice under section 9 power to make rules appointment of same person to be both inspector and the veterinary practitioner and protection of persons under this act all this come under this Uh, glanders and parsi act 1899 what is difference in parsi and glanders means parsi is the cutaneous form of glanders then the next act is the dowrin act so dowrin act came in the course 1910 and uh, here also uh, somewhere these are also similar with that of the glanders and parsi act 1899 just you keep in mind that this act came in course in the 1910 now the next act is the drug and cosmetic act uh, that is 1940 here all the uh, drugs and cosmetics uh, their use their distribution has to um, its manufacture its sale uh, about this the rules are there uh, for effective and uh, you no know, legal 
or uh, sops are there for manufacturers sale distribution and their use import export so everything deals uh, everything comes under this act it is called a drug and cosmetic acts 1940 you keep the year in mind that's uh, very important and the next uh, few acts i have covered here uh, from the recent uh, apart from the recent acts few more acts are there like drug and cosmetic acts 1940 drug and cosmetic rules 1945 here most of the people get confused act comes in 1940 rules came in 1945 a comes first r comes later so act in 1940 rules came in 1945 poison act came in 1919 dangerous act came in 1930 and biomedical waste management and handling rules came in the 1998 now this is the uh, <clears throat> this is one chart dealing with the categories of biomedical waste and how it has to be destroyed and all as uh, it is very necessary because there is a law there is a rule uh, for that one only for the destruction of biomedical waste <clears throat> so this chart it will deal uh, here this chart it will deal what type of different uh, biomedical wastes are there and accordingly they have been categorized in the category in the 10 categories from the less hazardous to the extremely hazardous i will take for an example and uh, here three categories are there first one is the waste category number second one is the waste category type and third one is the treatment and disposal the first one is the waste category number here uh, 10 categories just as uh, i told you category 1 to category 10 and waste category is there like waste category means <clears throat> here from the human anatomical waste it comes in category 1 but category 10 it's the most hazardous and in this one chemical waste will come especially chemical used in the production of biologicals chemicals used in the disinfection and the insecticides so accordingly uh, categories has been made <coughs> category 10 is the most hazardous and category 1 is the less hazardous in the last uh, column this is the treatment and disposal method has been given mostly it is by the insertion or deep burrowing but in some cases autoclave and microwaving uh, <clears throat> and autoclave and microclave mutilation and this shedding has also been useful thank you so much uh, today we have covered this important uh, all the legal veterinary medical veterinary legal case acts rules uh, sub acts mainly prevention of cruelty of animals then uh, so many <clears throat> uh, Uh, laws frauds sections uh, indian penal code sections then uh, what different type of frauds can be done and how uh, what test can be done to detect that one everything we have covered and uh, today we have finished not just this veterinary ethics and jurisprudence but we have also finished the entire medicine it taken uh, 12 <clears throat> lectures for us in order to finish that effectively today we have finished this last part now uh, if you have any type of question uh, you ask you can ask me uh, <clears throat> as uh, if i know that effectively uh, if i know that surely then i will let you know but uh, if it is not there then i will let you know uh, by this akar foundation uh, <clears throat> uh, but i will let you know to the akar foundation then they will convey uh, that answer to you okay if you have any question you uh, can also put that question in this uh, chat box but if you don't have then no problem we can uh, stop for today's session over here only <clears throat> thanks uh, everyone for this uh, short and uh, wonderful 12 days uh, journey two weeks journey i thank you for all of you also and uh, from my side uh, a very good luck to everyone perform well and uh, uh, you uh, till the i don't know when exactly this date of uh, lo exam will come but uh, till that day uh, you just keep on reading at least you keep on devoting at least your 1 to 1.5 hours daily that is also sufficient uh, in my case also i did that thing only i used to Uh, study just two hours uh, two to three hours maximum but i used to study that every day i didn't miss a single day so you keep on studying if you draw one to two hours per day then those are 
very much sufficient to clear this uh, exam. <clears throat> so thank you. And uh, today, if you have, if you don't have any questions about this uh, lecture, then we can stop here. Thank you and uh, very good.